Hello everyone and welcome to Talk of Your Gaming's Match Preview of the last game of the season. Well, for Leicester, but not so much for West Ham United. As Leicester City take on West Ham United, the transfer window might not be open yet, but I've made a loan sign-in. Ryan, how you doing? Yeah, I don't, you won't get much out of this loan sign-in at the moment, mate, I tell you. But um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very well, thank you, mate. How you been? Yeah, I'm good. Um, Struggling to get up for this game, if I'm honest with you. There's a little bit of like, meh, about it uh, because of the the obvious game uh, in 10 days' time. But I'm sort of looking forward to that one more than anything. But what's your thoughts on Leicester then? Let's kick it off with the usual question. Yeah, do you know what, mate? Uh, if you Six weeks ago, I looked at this fixture and I was fearing it because I was thinking, oh, I don't want to be going to Leicester last game of the season, needing something. Um, but I watched Leicester the other night and defensively they looked all right. But... I'm surprised the position they're in, you know, with the team they've got, the squad they've got. You know, you look, you've only got to look at their bench the other night to see what they had on there. Harvey Barnes, Dakar, Madison. You know, they've got some good individual players, but they're not playing as a team. And I, I still think that sacking Brendan Rodgers was, was the wrong decision. I think if they would have kept him, they would have got out of this. I think that you look at the clubs that haven't sacked their managers, West Ham, David Moyes, obviously Nottingham Forest kept their manager. They stayed up. Crystal Palace obviously got Roy Hodgson back, but he knew the club inside out. And you look at the three teams that potentially are going to go down, they've all changed their managers. And um, yeah, it's not worked out well for them. But I'm like you, mate. It's, it's a game for me now that I'm glad we don't need nothing. We're nine points clear. We can put our feet up, have a cigar, have a beer. You know, just hope that none of our players get pick up any silly injuries on Sunday. And then it's all, all eyes on Prague. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm surprised at how bad they've been, really. I've watched a lot of Leicester this season. And whenever you do watch them, I think there's just issues all over the pitch, though. The keeper situation, it was always a gamble, letting Schmeichel go and then go with Ward and then Everson as well. And that's not really worked out. Centre-backs have been a problem. Their full-backs are always injured, regardless of who it is. I mean, you know, James Justin is one of the best centre... a really good full-back, but he's just never available. Um, you go into centre of the pitch and you've got Ndidi. I mean, what happened to him a couple of years ago? He's the best defensive midfielder in the league, or one of them. I mean, you watch him now, lumbering around the pitch, and you think, where's this guy gone? Jamie Vardy, this will, might come back to bite me on the arse on Sunday, but I don't care. He's, he's finished. He's just nowhere near as good as he used to be. And they're almost clinging on to the fact that Vardy might put in one performance like vintage Vardy and that'll get them the three points. But while they're doing that, they've got, you know, he said, Daka sat on the bench. And he actually had his purple spell last season. And that's just not come back. It's just a load of really good players that aren't performing for whatever reason. Like you said, they're not playing as a team. And I agree with you about Brendan Rodgers. I I know you like him. I like Brendan Rodgers as well as a manager. And they certainly be no worse off. I think that's safe to say they'll be no worse off. And when they played Newcastle, like you said, defensively they were good. But they needed to win, really. And he almost sacrificed any chance of winning to play for a nil-nil. And he got his nil-nil. But you look at the league table, even during the game, it kept popping up. And you kept watching it thinking, am I reading this right? Because it's not really helpful. A draw's nice, but it's not really enough for Leicester here. But if you're going into if you're going to St James's Park on match day 37 needing a win, then you've done something seriously wrong in the other 36 games and that's where they are. Do you think they're going to get relegated? Now for those that don't know at home, obviously Leicester need to they have to win. If they don't win they're down regardless of what happens in the Everton game. But um, if Leicester win, Everton then must win to stay up. So if Everton draw or lose and Leicester win, Leicester stay up. And then you've got the Leeds thing as well. But I think Leeds is, can we say Leeds are buggered? Is that safe? Leeds are, Leeds are out of it. Do you reckon Leicester will be in the championship come half six? Yeah, I mean, as you said, I think they took a big gamble the other night. I think that was what Dean Smith set up. I think they looked at it as we're going to take a gamble here. We get a point here and it's always on West Ham get the three points, because they looked at us thinking, we're in a European final, you know, who got more chance of getting three points out of Newcastle, West Ham, go West Ham. I, I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a mad Sunday. I do think Leicester will go down, but I think they will win. I think they'll beat us on Sunday. I think that they'll want it more. I think our players won't be as, won't get stuck in as much, because it's all... You can't blame our players because no. look, they're professionals, but they all want to get they all want to be in that starting eleven on um in Prague. You can't blame them for that. We don't need anything. So I just think that Everton will win. 
I think that Leicester will win. And I think that Leeds, I think all three teams might win because I think Leeds are home to Spurs. It's a winnable game. I think just, just for me, I think that when you said about Leicester need another vintage Vardy performance, I think you'll find that he'll probably score on Sunday. <laughs> and, and I think it'll be a tight game. Um, I've, I, I predicted 2 1 in our predictions. I just think that it's, they're going to want it more. We might find ourselves down 1 0 up or something. But I think with our players, you know, they're just not not that they're not interested. They want to play their way, and I think it's nice that the players keep ticking over, getting that match fitness. But they're going to be pulling out of challenges, of course they are, and I don't blame them. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think Leicester will go down. I'm, I'm not even convinced Leicester beat us, to be honest with you, Ryan. There's been some games I've watched, and it's not just Leicester. I'm applying this to to Leeds against us last week as well. Watch them. I think and I'm not watching a team battling for their lives here. I've, I've been quite disappointed by the lack of like. Aggression as in fighting people, but a lack of grit about them. You know, when when we beat Leeds last weekend, it felt like a preseason game. It was I thought it was easy for us at the end of it. You know, they, they were two one down. I didn't feel any fight from Leeds whatsoever. I thought, well, is this it? Is this all they've got? And some games I've watched last, I found myself thinking that as well. I'm thinking, where's the leaders of this team gone? Like when they won. The Premier League, it was full of like 11 players fighting for the shirt, fighting for each other. Even the players that were on the bench that would come on, they, they just grafted ridiculously hard. And you're watching this one, and it's a shadow of the side in terms of attitude that won the Premier League title. And I know it's a long time ago, the squad's completely different, but you're just looking at it thinking, what is that? And Leicester should be up for it, but there's an element of me that's I don't know if they will. And if the news comes through early doors that Everton have taken the lead or something, that'll just knock the stuffing right out of them completely. But more importantly, out the fans in the ground as well. And that will then go down to the pitch. I want to talk about one player in particular, Harvey Barnes. Been linked to him. What are you saying? Yeah, good player. Uh, I've always uh, rated him. Um, I think it's a player that we was linked linked with before, um, before he went to Leicester. But yeah, no, I'm... um, I'm a big fan of him. If, if it was someone that we was linked with, I think James Madison as well, I think would be an ideal signing for us. You know, there'd be a lot of teams looking at Leicester's squad thinking, they go down, we're going to just rip them apart. Yeah. You know, we're going to... And unfortunately, that's what happens in football. As you said, it's been a fairy tale 10 years for Leicester, you know, winning the Premier League, the FA Cup, you know, surviving, uh, staying up on the last day of the season and then going on. So if they stay up on Sunday... Put a bet on them winning the league next season. It might, <laughs> it might repeat itself. But, yeah, no, Harvey Barnes is a player that excites me. And I think with what – look, we don't know whether if Declan Rice is going to leave the football club, but it looks like it, he will be. So we, we need to bring in some really good replacements. I'm not saying he's going to be a replacement for Declan Rice, but we start using that money smart and bring in some of these players. You know, you look at – there's potentially some a couple of Leeds players, you know, whoever goes down, like even Southampton, you've got Will Prowse. I mean, we've been linked with him a lot. Um, it's going to be an interesting uh, transfer window, I tell you. Is there anyone else you fancy from Leicester, Bar, Barnes and Madison, if they did go down? Uh, Tillemans. I will, I, I'd, I'd definitely take a, a punt with him. I think he's a, I think he could be a good replacement. And uh, I know this sounds mad to say, but I think he could link up well with someone like Thomas Suchik. <laughs> I really do. I mean, Declan Rice... Look, we're talking as if he's going to leave the yeah. football if he's gone, but that's just, it looks like he will be. But you've got to start planning ahead and, and you've got to start looking at, and, I, and I'm sure the club will be. I'm sure they know a lot more than what we do. And I think that David Moyes will be, well, we don't even know if David Moyes is going to be our manager. It's, it's going to be a, a mad summer for us as well. But yeah, I mean, look, Iniacho, you know, it's, uh, no, nah, probably not. Probably about five years ago, maybe. Um in D.D. Tillemans. Dakar's the one I'd like. I think Dakar's... Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just uh, it's not Dakar. quite worked at last year. I've been surprised by how it's not worked out because I thought he looked like the perfect replacement for Jamie Vardy in terms of his style, his pace and whatever, and it hasn't worked at all. But he's someone I think would be worth a punt at West Ham. Um, and I'm not saying I want him, but I do wonder if a Bonner was to leave, we might be looking at... Harry Suter, obviously we were linked with him quite a bit when he was at Stoke, went to Leicester, it's not quite worked out again for him, but he had a good game against Newcastle, but that's mainly because of his height than anything. Mm. But I do wonder if Leicester to go down, if Moyes would maybe fancy going again and trying to get him um, to West Ham. Um, anyway, shall we, we'll leave it there about Leicester. Are you ready to talk about West Ham? 
Yeah, I'm, I love it, mate. This um, team news, there's only really Skamak and missing. Apart from that, David Moyes once again has a very big squad of players to choose from going into this game. Um, is it a tough 11 to pick, Ryan? The team you want to see, not David Moyes, is it quite tricky? Yeah, it is because you want to rest some players. There's a lot of players that have played a lot of football over the last, last few weeks, months. You know, Jared Bowen never gets a rest. Um, same with Thomas Suchek, Declan Rice. You know, there's a lot of players, but I don't want to go. There's players that didn't play last week that need run out. They 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 still need that little bit of game time. So it's going to be a very mixed team um, on Sunday. I think. I mean, the team the team I've, I've gone for is sort of similar to last week with just a couple of changes. But do, do you want me to let you know? Yeah, who would you like in goal then? Who would you oh, fancy? I've gone for Fabianski in goal. I know there's a lot of people saying Ariola should get game time, but I think with a goalkeeper, I don't really think you need the game time as much as, as the outfield player. So I've gone for Fabianski in goal. My back four is going to be the same as it finished last week. Soufal, Kera, Ogbonna and Emerson at the back. Uh, in midfield, I've gone for Declan Rice yeah. and Downs. So I'm going to rest Suchek. In front of them, I've got Ben Rama coming back in on the left. Lanzini in the middle and Fournells on the right with Antonio up top. Just give Antonio that. I'll give him 45 minutes, give Ben Rama 45, rest Bowen. Just give him just give him a little run out. But I still think that team's strong enough. You know, it'll be Lanzini's last Premier League appearance, most probably in a West Ham shirt. Uh, Downs, I think, will be good to get, give him a run out. And also, um, you've got Declan Rice. I know a lot of people say rest him, but I still think we need him out on the pitch just for his leadership skills. Yeah, I agree with the Declan Rice thing. He's the one player that, like, it feels too weak if you don't have him in the starting eleven. Um, I, I am one that thinks a goalkeeper needs much sharpness, Ryan. I think um, Ariola for me, but it's also more... I'd like Kever and a Gerrard in front of him, but it's also more just to build up that relationship, if anything. I think there's been too many times this season where I've seen a Gerrard and Ariola bickering, to put it um, kindly, and I, I don't like that. Um, but Zuma, I know you've left him out, but he's one of the ones I think, well, just don't risk him. Just do not mm. risk Kurt Zuma whatsoever. And Sufal on the right and Creswell on the left. But if he was to play Emerson, I wouldn't mind too much. I think the reason I'm putting Creswell in is because I think he will probably start the final. But it's difficult for Moyes, really, because the balancing act of putting out a team that can compete, can possibly win the game, that doesn't take the piss out of... Everton and Leeds to some extent, as I say, I'm putting the kids out. Leicester's going to win. Good luck, lads. Good, uh, good luck staying in the Premier League. But at the same time, he's got to do what's right for West Ham and for his players, which is we've got a final. Sorry, Leicester. Uh, sorry, Everton. We don't care if you're in a relegation battle. We're doing what's right for us, and this is the team we're going to put out. But like you said, I think Mark's sharpness is important. So that's my back five. I've also got Rice um, in there with Downs, and I've also got Finals in there because I think. I think he was excellent against Leeds, Ryan. Um, and I know he played on the left and cut in, but I'd just play him in that number 10 role just to... Because if he has another good game, I don't think he'll start against Fiorentina. I think the starting 11 is pretty much confirmed by the right back. I don't know if you agree. I think the right back's the only one that I'm unsure what Moyes is going to do. I'm quite confident I can predict the other 10, but the right back... Mm, and that won't include Finals. So I think if Finals can put in another good performance and things aren't going well in Prague... He comes on on the hour mark instead of the 80th minute or something. We can change it a little bit earlier. Um, ben Ram on the left, Bowen on the right, and then Antonio up front. I agree with putting Antonio, obviously, get him off at some point, um, but put him out there and hopefully to get him a goal. Do you, how do you feel? I mean, I've kind of guessed your answer here going by 11, but because of the sort of integrity of the Premier League, if you like, how do, important do you feel it is that West Ham feel a strong team for this one or do you not care at all? Uh, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'll look at it as if, if Everton, Leeds and Leicester was in our position, would they care? Like, It's not our fault that they've been rubbish over the 37 games. You know, It's not our fault. We was in their position six, seven weeks ago. We've dug our heels in, got ourselves out of it, and now we've got a European final to look forward to. You know, I still think any team we put out will be a strong team because we've got a good squad. Um, it's just about getting the balance right. I mean, we we both haven't even mentioned Paquetta yet because we don't want to see him in that yeah. level. I'll wrap him up, bubble wrap him, put fragile tape around him and send him to Prague, get him there safe, you know. 
because he's just a joy to watch. You watch the watch what he was doing last week on that pitch. It's taken a long time for him to settle into this uh, English game, the Premier League, because it's tough. But now he's just enjoying it. And I think next season we'll see an even better Lucas Paqueta, which will be frightening, uh, but exciting for us. But I agree with you with, with Four Nails. I think Four Nails has always been an important player for West Ham. Um, I know he's upset when he doesn't play, but I'm the sort of person, I like seeing players upset because it yeah. makes them more hungry to do better. And, uh, you know, I mean, we could have we could have said, look, rest Antonio, put Danny Ings up front, because Danny Ings, for me, I thought he was excellent against Leeds. I thought, you know, I know he didn't score, but running around, wanting the ball, he, the little through, through ball to Bowen. For me, with Jared Bowen, I think he's played a lot of football over the last couple of months. And I think with the news come out today that he's yeah. just, obviously, he's, well, he hasn't had the babies. Uh, but <laughs> but I, I think he's going to have a few sleepless nights. So um, I, I would rest him. You know, he's a, he's fit enough, you know. Creswell's a good shout, maybe giving him 45, maybe him and Emerson switching it up. So I think whatever team Moyes chooses on Sunday will be strong and it's going to be good enough to compete in the game. It just worries me that, as you said, if if the news filters through that Everton are two or three nil up and and their players, Leicester, might start going in silly on some challenges and they're frustrated because no one, no player wants it on their CV that they're they've they're been relegated. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Especially that's what that's part of the reason I wouldn't play Paqueta because there's anyone that's going to start doing stepovers and flicks that's really going to anger the Leicester players. It's Paqueta, and it's a joy to watch. But as an opposition player, that's the type of player you go through. Mark Noble would do it. If 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 I, I still remember the London Stadium when we first moved in, Chelsea were beating us comfortably. Hazard came on. And he started doing flicks and tricks. And Noble just went through him and took a yellow card and basically said, you don't do that. Like, you, we'll, we'll get beat. We're crap. You're better than us. We'll accept that. Fine. 3-0. Well done. Well done. But you do not start taking a piss mm. on our pitch. And I think if Paqueta starts doing that, I wouldn't be surprised if Samari or Indeedy or even Jamie Vardy thought, I'm not having this. This Like, we'll get relegated. That's on us. But that is taking liberties. And I think he's the type of player that might find himself getting booted into Rose pretty quickly. So I'd almost be like, just don't don't risk him. And to be fair, Leicester do start flying in on tackles. Moist be well within his rights to say, right, I'm going to do four subs here. I'm going to take off Declan Rice. I'm going to take off that player and Antonio. And the reason is because you, you lot are out of control now. I'm weakening my team. I'm going to put out the, the under-18s or whatever, and you can deal with it kind of thing. Um, it's a difficult one. I think Moyes is in a bit of a difficult position. Now, time for prediction. Not what you want to see, Ryan. What do you think Moyes will do on Sunday? Because I think he might actually field pretty much the 11 he's going to field in Prague and give it like a, a practice match, if you like, at least for the first hour of the game or something. Yeah, it'd be interesting if he does that. You know, if he started with the team that he thinks he's going to be starting 11 in Prague, you know, it'd be interesting. We, you said about the right back. I think Kerr over the last few games has, has really shone and, and it'd be harsh for him to miss out. But I just think... It's all set up for Soufal. Soufal to be starting in that final in Prague. You know, him and Suchek, it'd be emotional for them. You know, I hope that they can rise to the occasion. I'm pretty sure they will. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting. Maybe go 45 with the team. You know, give them a give them a run out. Take, as you said, Declan Rice off, Bowen off, Paquetta off, um, Antonio off. But I just it just worries me that. I, I always go back to the 2006 FA Cup final and I remember that, that frustrating week where we was waiting to hear if Everton and Ashton was going to be fit because they, they picked up that. And I don't want that. I don't want to be going in. Can you imagine how gutting in it be if, you know, touch wood going to happen, if Declan Rice picked up an injury or or Jared Bowen or someone like that, someone that's worked hard all season. And and this final is is something that, look, the, not only, uh, listen, the fans are buzzing for it, you know, but then players, imagine what they're feeling. Imagine they get Leicester out of the way and then all the attention, all the media for the positive reasons is going to be on them, this build-up to this final. And whatever people think of this competition, I still think it's the better-looking trophy out of the three, to be fair. Yeah, it definitely is, um, isn't it? It's quite a sexy little thing. And, and it's double it's double bubble, isn't it? Because you, you, you win that, you get a nice trophy, and you get back into Europa League. You're back in the better competition. Now, I don't want to knock the Conference League because it's given us so many great moments. Uh but we're unbeaten in it, and I don't want it to be the first game we lose is in the final because that would be heartbreaking. Last season when we lost to Frankfurt was was heartbreaking, but I always thought it was a bit too much for us. You know, 
last season. I think if we'd have got through, we'd have beat Rangers without a doubt. But I just think Frankfurt were another level. But this season, we're the best team in the competition. Fiorentina will be a tough game. But, you know, I'm confident we're going to do it, mate. I'm confident we're all going to be this time in two weeks' time. We'll just be waking up after a huge night hangover and, and hopefully celebrating, mate. Celebrating. You make, you're, uh, you're making me want to see the whole team rested, to be honest with you. Uh, you're making me... Honestly, if he turned up and he named the under-18s, I'd still yeah. be happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you could argue he can't win, but you could argue he can't lose, really. If he puts out a strong side, you go, well, we know why he's doing it. He's getting ready for the conference league. Because I just think there's there's 10, after the last game, there's 10 days till we play the final. So it's a long time in football, that. And I just think, you know, for Antonio in particular, didn't play a minute against Leeds. I think for him to go from the second leg against Alkmaar to the final. That's a long time without yeah. any football for any player. And I just think he, he needs minutes, in particular him. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he does, actually. He'll obviously have one eye on the final, but there might also be a little bit of loyalty from David Moyes towards Everton, which is I need to put a strong team to, to do my best to help Everton out a little bit. And he should think about West Ham. But I'm, I'll always forgive a manager if he's still got a little bit of loyalty to a former club he was at for over a decade. Um, I, I would completely understand it. So be interested to see what he does. Um, you've given away a little bit, but are you confident for this one? What, for Leicester? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I am, as I said earlier, mate, I, I can see them just wanting it that little bit more. I can see it maybe being a game where we go 1 0 up or something and then. You know, Leicester just just managed to nick it at the end and, and, and they win. But I still think they'll go down. I, I think Everton will get the result. Um, it'll be a, it will be a tough game, don't get me wrong. Their fans are going to be nervous from the first minute to the last minute. You know, could you imagine, like, they're going to be probably all eyes on the Everton game and not even watching the pitch because they're just worrying about that result. But Leicester has got a job to do still. You know, it's, it's tough times for them. But we've been there before. You know, we as I said, it could have been us. It could have been us talking now, saying we need we need a point. We need three points on on Sunday. But yeah, I think Leicester will nick it. I think two one. I don't ever like saying that we won't win. I just think our players are going to get to that point in the game where they're going to pull out of challenges and just want to get off the pitch as soon as they can on that coach back home and then rest up and then get on that plane. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, Leicester should want it more than us. I don't I don't see a problem with that statement. If I think there's something wrong if a side in a relegation battle doesn't have more desire than a side with little to play for on the last game of the season. The, the, the Leicester players should have their stays rolled up. They should almost be making threats to our players in the tunnel before the game and say, mate, I'm going through you. Uh, before, when I spoke to Anton Ferdinand, he was saying in the semi-final of the FA Cup, he said his good friends were shoot down him because of the England under 21s. So he was in the tunnel. Stuart Downing came up to him and was like, you're right, mate. He went to shake his hand. And Anton was like, what are you doing? Get away from me. I'm not your mate. He says, when we go out there, and Anton said to him, if I see you on the pitch, I'm going to put you into Rosette, mate. We're not friends. He said, we'll be mates after the game. He said, we're not friends now. But get away from me, kind of thing. And that's what Leicester players should be like in the tunnel. You almost expect them all, Telemans to go up to Lucas Paquette and go, mate, I'm going through you within the first oh, five was, minutes. If I was Jamie Vardy, I'd be walking around all the West Ham players saying, you win today, I'm nicking all your passports and no one's going to Prague. <laughs> <laughs> they need to do something. That's possibly the only way they might stay in the Premier League at this point. But that that atmosphere will be an interesting one on Sunday. They'll start off nervous, but should we take the lead or Everton take the lead or both? Because bear in mind, Bournemouth might will take their squads quite a lot as well. For going to Goodison, why why should O'Neill play his first eleven? Why not give a couple of the youngsters at Bournemouth a chance? I seen last week he started uh, Brooks, which is you know a fantastic thing to do, especially given what the player's been through. But there's no way that if Bournemouth were in a relegation battle, he would have started Brooks last week. He did it out of sentimentality, and I think it's the right thing to do. Bournemouth have earned that right to do that, just like we've earned the right to do what we want on Sunday. Um, so, but that crowd could very quickly turn to an angry crowd on Sunday, I think. At just oh, yeah. the, the the lack of the lack of leadership at the club, the poor decisions they've made, the lack of investment in the squad last summer. They, they just didn't buy players. Rogers had no money to spend. Um it, that club was a shambles last summer and this is the end result of it kind of thing. Um, can I get any final words from yourself please? Um and you're sticking with two one Leicester are you? Yeah, I'm going to stick with two. Unless, as you said about the fans, um, it could turn ugly. I, I totally agree with that because I've I've been to Leicester before and and I've seen their fans when they can turn and 
obviously, you know what our fans are going to be like. Good spirits. You know, they're going to be winding them up. Singing <laughs> down. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it because our fans, for the first time this season, I think, can actually relax. Yeah. You can relax at a game. You know, it's going to be sunshine in Leicester. You know, I think a few pay- people will be going to the uh, counting house pub and having a few drinks before. You know, spirits will be high. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be an entertaining game. As I said, as long as our players come off that pitch, not picking up any injuries, you know, I'm not really, I'll be honest, I'm not really bothered about about the result. But as you said about Bournemouth, though, one thing I would say is they caused an upset, not an upset, but they got a good win at Spurs the other week. You know, I wouldn't underestimate them. And Everton as well are going to be feeling the pressure. So it's one of these games where I, I love going West Ham away, but, I'd rather be at home watching all the relegation battle because <laughs> it's just it's one of them things that you love to watch when you're not involved. Yeah, everything's a bit of a mess going into the weekend. I th- don't think they've got any full-backs fit, so I think Godfrey and Holgate will be the full-backs. And I think calvert Lutz struggling for the game as well, so it's not their, their first team they're going to have out. I'm going to say 2 all because I really enjoyed us last week, Ryan, that game against Leeds. I thought that was some of the best football we've played all season. I think it's because the pressure's off. I think we were able to play nice attack of football. Fanal's had his best game this season. Paqueta was doing his thing. Soufal. Soufal's got to earn his shirt for the final. I, I would like to see Soufal start, but because of Kera's performances, Soufal will know it is, he's not guaranteed to start in Prague. So if he starts right back Sunday, he's got to put in a shift. If Emerson starts, he might be thinking, hang on, I can nick Creswell's spot for the final here. So there's a lot of players that might get into that team that might fancy their places up for grabs. Whether you or I believe that that's possible is a different story. But as long as the players think they've got a shot of getting into the starting 11, that's the most important thing. And um, yeah, I, I think it'll be a good game, actually. I just don't think Leicester have got it in them from what I've seen over the last few weeks. They just don't have that bottle to be honest with you um but anyway we'll leave it there ryan thank you very much for joining me appreciate it mate thank you so much and uh thank you for all your good work over the season mate it's been i said last night with, with scott this season feels so long because of the world cup yeah. break but it, i can't believe it's the last game of the season already like it's just mad like so yeah look keep up the good work mate thank you for having me on and uh let's get uh let's get that trophy in prague mate Likewise, thank you for joining me. If you guys have enjoyed the preview at home, please do drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the Hammers Chat and West Ham Fan TV. Myself and Ryan, we'll catch you in a bit.